Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Deep True Crime. I'm Manny Rodriguez. In today's episode, we are continuing the coverage of the University of Idaho homicide. Four students brutally stabbed to death in their beds. One was actually just visiting overnight with his girlfriend. But throughout this, there has been a name that has been continuously thrown in the front of this whole case, even after law enforcement already said he was not a person of interest. And so I want to share with you what is it that people are leading to him? Why are they pointing their fingers at John Jack Showalter? And it could be kind of confusing around this because there's a John, there's a Jack, there's multiple Jacks, and there's even a Jake or multiple Jakes and a, even a Jack. You see how confusing this stuff is? And so I want to dive into it and let you know what do we know. And police have given another update. Before we dive into it, they have not named any suspect. Do they have a suspect? Well, that's a great question. Let's dive into what is it that we know at this time. Of the four University of Idaho students killed on Sunday, November 13th, two were last seen alive ordering food from a late night food truck around 1.41 a.m. A video of the incident shows a man in a hoodie watching Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan as they were placing their orders and speaking to some more people present there at the time. And if you recall, I have shared on this previously, uh, last week sometime, I found it very interesting, okay? This guy in a hoodie, who we later find out is Jack Showalter. Let me let make it clear that law enforcement cleared him. But it is known that even after someone is cleared, they can still be brought back to the front as a suspect. And while I was reporting on this video, I had shared like, hey, I found it odd that first he gets there and his hat is on. It's on actually backwards. But then as he's standing off to the side, he then turns his hat around and puts his hoodie on. But when he arrives there, he did not have his hoodie on. I found that to be a little odd doesn't mean that he's the killer, right? But I did find that odd, like he was trying to hide himself a little bit. And so this went, they, you know, the girls went to Grub Truckers around 1.40 in the morning and they ordered a $10 carbonara and waited about 10 minutes for their food. While they waited, they can be seen speaking to some of the other people waiting by the truck. And so these four individuals, two of them were at the grub truck. The other two had been at a fraternity party. And so this man in the hood, in, in his hoodie, standing by the girls, might have been chatting with the girls. Allegedly, he actually knew the girls. And there is a lot of things out there. I am going to do my best to keep this to what is it that we know? I'm not putting him out there as a suspect. If you want to put him out there as a suspect, comment below because a lot of people are convinced he is the guilty party. And so according to the True Crime Society, people have theorized that the hooded man is Jack Showalter. And according to their theories, Showalter was kicked out of his fraternity recently and that he might possess the same knife that was used to murder the said students. Again, this is all theorized at the moment. None of this has been proven. But we also know that the they do not have any witnesses that that had anything to do with this. They don't have they really have not called it said any persons of interest, no arrests, no suspects. 
So according to detectives, this included a man that was visible in this video footage and the two roommates who survived the carnage. Now authorities, they have not dismissed the possibility that there might be more than one murderer. They are now trying to find out if anyone bought a fixed blade recently. Moscow, this is a, a little community of 25,000 people. And this is actually on the Washington state border, while the University of Idaho has 11,000 students. Now, the city had not experienced any murder in almost seven years, since 2015. Now, in recent interviews, students reportedly stated that they normally felt safe walking around late at night or leaving their bikes unlocked around campus. But after this gruesome murder, they don't feel the same. They don't even want to come back to campus while this killer is on the loose. Now, they're not, no one knows if this is a serial killer. When you kill four people at one time, that's generally not a serial killer. Generally, it happens over a time of period, and then it, that's kind of not, you know, not all done at once. And so now some students have stayed back and they are just doing their online studies. A cafe nearby reportedly told its customers that it would close early so that employees could get home before dark. Now, this was reported by the New York Times. And it's things like this that keep it in the forefront. Okay. Now, of course, the detectives, they want to also control some of these rumors that are out there. So they put out another press release today and they shared that there have been statements and speculation about this case. Victim injuries, cause of death, evidence collection and processing, and investigative techniques. With the active criminal investigation, law enforcement has not released additional facts to the family or the public, which also kind of states some of what I reported on last night about, about Kaylee being the one that was stabbed the most. This was confirmed by Brian Enton of News Nation. This was also confirmed that the family had got this information. Where did they get this information? We don't know. Steven Gonzalez, right now, he's kind of playing his own detective and he hired a private investigator. It does not look like he trusts the law enforcement to do their job correctly. I'm not too sure what all of this is going on, but what we don't want is we don't want misinformation going on around the, around there. And so they have they have shared that that number one, the two surviving roommates were not a suspect. Mail in the grub truck surveillance video, which I believe is this guy Jack Showalter, and they said that he was cleared. The private party driver who took Kaylee and Maddie home on November 13th was cleared. The male Kaylee and Madison called a numerous times during the early morning hours of November 13th. They said he was cleared. Any individual at the residence when 911 was called or the individual on the lease who moved out of the residence before the school year started and was not present at the time of the incident. They were cleared as well. You know, and it's things like that where it's like, man, you really want the correct information. But internet sleuths, being internet sleuths, they don't want to have that. They truly believe that this Jack Showalter, because what we find out now is his alibi, if you remember, the family, Steve and his wife, were like, we want to know whose alibi is who. What do we know? Then he shares later that it is confirmed that the alibi of Jack Showalter is he left the area around 2 a.m. to drive five hours straight to his, to his family's home because they were leaving for Africa. Now, he did not submit DNA, but 
That's probably because they did not ask him to submit DNA yet. So, again, internet sleuths being internet sleuths, you got to be careful. I was watching one video today where they were talking about a masked man on a doorbell. Now, here's the truth. This was originally populated, from what I can find, from a particular YouTuber. He has a lot of subscribers. He is... He is someone who gets a lot of views on every video, but this came from him. But here's the truth about him. I'm not going to call his name out. During the Gabby Petito case, he shared some false information that he created himself about the Brian Laundry story. Because when Brian Laundry was on the run, he created this image, this, this video. It was like 15 seconds of this guy boating. But a TikToker went dig went digging deep on this. They found out the original video, which was some friends on the boat, had nothing to do with Brian Laundry. But this guy, he created this false narrative to get him a lot more views. It was a complete lie. And then there was a, a Zoom video of him caught lion kind of smirking about it. You got to be careful who you trust. From what I can tell, this masked man caught on a ring doorbell, it, it looks like it, it originated from this true crimer. Maybe you know who I'm talking about. Because I saw that Twitter people were like, hey, you shared this false information about this. What else are you sharing that's not accurate that's why it's extremely careful you got to be careful who you're listening to because cops said they have no suspects they don't have any suspects right so they haven't even named a person of interest on their website when it says are there any suspects Right here it says, at this time, there are no named suspects. No arrest and no weapon had been found. So, let me ask you, no named suspects. Does that mean they have someone on their radar? Does that mean that they have someone on their radar? Because if they have someone on their radar and they're not mentioning it, that could mean something on its own, right? It said right there, at this time, there are no named suspects. Like maybe they have someone, they just haven't named them. Which also goes back to, is that referring to Jack Showalter? Right? Is that referring to John Jack Showalter. I'm not too sure if that's his name or how. I don't even know him personally on all that or anything like that. But there are no suspects that are in custody and no weapon has been located. This is information from the police. On the night of the incident, officers located a dog at the residence. This dog is Little Murphy. The dog was unharmed turned over to animal services and later released to a responsible party. Now, local businesses were contacted to determine if a fixed blade knife had been recently purchased. So far, nothing has been given about that. And so the rumor control part of this, the law enforcement, they want to, you know, control a lot of this rumor. Sometimes the internet sleuths they can really throw people under the bus that has nothing to do with this. And so law enforcement, they said there has been extensive media interest regarding an incident at Taylor Avenue and Banfield on November 13, 2022 at 301 a.m. The incident was an alcohol offense, which was addressed by the on-scene on officer. Of course, People are like, is this related? No. And so they also said, we have not changed our belief that the murders were a targeted attack. However, investigators 
have not concluded if the target was the residence or its occupants. Now, as we know, that has been a little toss up, right? One minute they said there is a, a, you know, there was a target. Next minute, maybe there wasn't a target. So they're trying to put this to rest. There are, they're saying it looks like they, that the murders were a targeted attack. But they've not concluded if the target was the resident or its occupants. So, hmm, that is interesting on its own. And, you know, back to Murphy the dog. It has come to find out because obviously no one knows if he was barking, if he, or what happened. They said that he was in a room by himself. Now, as we know, the two girls were in a room together. The boyfriend and girlfriend were in a room together, which means that leaves two do two of the bedrooms, one on the third floor, one on the second floor, that were unoccupied. So the dog had to be in one of those, right? I mean, that's the only thing I could possibly think of when it comes to that. And so that's part of the press release that they shared about the dog on there. And from what I have found that they are literally working through more than 2,600 tips now. But my, my gosh, nothing, nothing leading to this. But everyone is leaning towards Jack Showalter. But I'm not too sure exactly why, except that there are some shady things around them. And it's, but again, how does that lead someone to say it's you? What about that Jeremy guy? All the, I'm, you know, the internet sleuth saying, Jeremy, why is he getting on video so much? Look at his posture. Look, and then he goes and submits his DNA basically to get the internet sleuths off his back. You know, I get it. We want answers, but do we really want to put the wrong people out there? Why does Xana's mom's past history need to come to light around this story? Help me understand that. Comment below why Xana's mom's life has to come into this. Why? People are like, oh, well, people were into drugs, so maybe drugs were related. Let the law enforcement be the law enforcement. You know, I can appreciate internet sleuths trying to help, but it's one thing to help. It's another thing to start throwing a bunch of people under the bus, bus that has nothing to do with this. Don't you agree? Like, let's not throw the wrong person here. You know, but truth is, Jack Showalter, he only lived one minute away from the girls. So, you could see that, you know. You, you murder the girls, then you get to your home real quick and not anyone sees you. I mean, that's a fair statement, right? I mean, that's kind of a fair statement on that. Then you had someone else who posted about Jack and his anger issues and his temper and how she slapped him because of her screaming at him or screaming at her over a mistake and showing his anger. Uh, I personally do not think that has anything to do with that. I mean, like, you know, but Steve Gonsalves said in an interview that he did leave the country without submitting DNA. His alibi, as I shared, is that he f drove five hours straight to his parents' cabin before they left to Africa. What we don't know is, was it good? were they already planning this vacation? It is thought that maybe him and his brother were adopted from Kenya. Well, then that means they got ties to Africa, people. And, you know, I want to do my best. I'm not media. Obviously, what I'm doing is part of media. I don't have any credentials. I didn't go to school for journalism or anything like that. But I want to do my best to put forth the right information. That's why I'm hesitant to jump on things so fast. Jack has been a suspect in internet sleuth's eyes, not law enforcement, for since the beginning. But I didn't jump on it. I wanted to hear more. I wanted to know more. 
I think that is extremely key. And so from my understanding, from my understanding, there were pictures that were posted on Reddit of a forensics team at the Yellow Apartments spraying luminol around his, in his home. Now, luminol is a spray that if there's any blood, it would literally light up like a Christmas tree. I got that quote from First 48 when they were talking about luminol. So it does light up. You turn out the lights, you spray it down. If there's blood, it comes through very much. No matter how much cleaning you have done with bleach, it still comes through. So the question is, was that Jack's apartment? Is that where he lives? So that part is also interested. And was Jack Showalter voted out of Ethan Chapin's fraternity? Was he bitter about it? Is there truth to that? Because that has been out there multiple, multiple times as well. And so, but again, people like to point fingers. What about the corner club rumor? It is said that Jack was kicked out that evening. But who's speaking on that? I want to know more about that. But I will say that some of these things, well, they are kind of shady. They are kind of shady. But at the same time, if he was already on his way to Africa, hey, there have been times where at the late at night, I'm like, I can pull this four or five hour drive. It could be 11 o'clock, you know, 10 o'clock. But to leave about 2 a.m. and make a, make a, hold on a second. Oh. Sorry about that. So, I mean, this happens, right? This literally happens where people are, you know, they get up, they go, they, you know, but if he was at a bar and he had been drinking and then take a five hour drive, well, if they were leaving the next day, you better be there, right? So, but could he also have been doing the, the do and then he was out right away? There should be surveillance all over. So right now I'm not sold on it. His alibi is that he left around 2 a.m. and he drove five hours but he left at two, which means he would have got there about seven. This is about 300 miles separating them. And this is where last night I reported about Kaylee's dad saying how he wants to know everyone's alibi. He doesn't understand how some could have been cleared so fast. Then we find out about more on Jack Showalter. Right. And so that's where it makes it a little not too sure. But this is where you can see that that someone sharing that's that Steve Gonzalez in an interview shared that he left the country without. Now, of course, I'm not just going to go off of this Sue Ellen Hunter posting this. I actually found out that it truly was confirmed. And. You know, Jack Showalter, he was connected with Maddie Mogan and other people in this around here. But let's make sure that because this is very confusing. You have Jack D, his last name, Decor. That's Kaylee Gonzalez's ex-boyfriend, who the family says Jack D has nothing to do with this. We're 110% sure. But again... We've had bigger surprises in the past. Then you have Jack Showalter. He's the grub truck hoodie guy that we're mainly talking on today. Then you have Jack K. Katovich. This is Ethan Chapin's Sigma frat brother. And so, again, we are still trying to find out more on this, about this whole thing. So Jack... He was a hunter and he is said to have multiple knives 
So that's kind of why people are kind of thinking about him. I'm sharing with you why people are leaning towards Jack. And look how close he lived. You got the red where he lived. You have the green where the kids live. They are literally like a minute and a half a walk apart, not even a mile. So that is where it's like he is so close to the crime scene. Again, it does not mean that he is guilty. And, you know, we also get some crazy footage about a, uh, what the heck's her name? I have to remember it. Hopefully it'll come back to me here really soon because I forgot to add that to my notes. But hopefully it'll come back to me. And nope, not yet. So Jack Showalter, again, I, I mean, when I first saw the video of him at the food truck and the way he changed, put his, turned his hat around, put his hoodie on, Seemed like he was kind of like off to the side. But even after that, they were hanging out. Looked like she even took a selfie. You know, kind of a picture with him behind her, but not a selfie with him. So I don't know if it was a selfie of herself or she was getting a picture of Jack who was behind him. But again, more, this is, we have more questions around this than we have answers. And that's where it's like, we want to know more, but we don't want to get the wrong people mixed up in this. We do not want to get the wrong person. But so many people swear up and down that he is behind this. You know, even people are like, you know, at first I had my doubts, but now I'm convinced. And so I, I, I you know, I, I don't understand. And then we find out that the dad, Steven Gonzalez, had fixed a lock recently in one of the doors. So are there locks on the doors of all of these rooms? Was it unlocked that night? But we're not hearing much, so I'm not going to try to get too deep into that. But, you know, should her dad, Steven Gonzalez, should he hire a private investigator at this point, you know, because truth is that could possibly hinder the progress, you know, of this. And so he's turned into private investigators as he believes that these cops are too ex inexperienced in this matter of these four innocent lives taken from this world way too soon. And so Steven Gonzalez the dad, he's hiring a private investigator. He's grieving. He's upset. He wants to hire his own private investigators. My question, and I asked this last night if you were on. If not, you're hearing the question for the first time. Are the FBI involved with this? Does the FBI need permission to get involved? Federal authorities are involved, but is that the Federal Bureau of Investigators? I don't know. I've not heard FBI being involved in this. Do you know? Help me clear some of this up. Because I'm like you. I'm just trying to find some answers. I'm trying to help keep this in front of people. Because at the end of the day, this cannot fall to the wayside. But Steve, he, Steve Gonzalez, the dad, he raised that his fears yesterday in an exclusive post with with the post saying that he was also concerned that one suspicious character has been ruled out too quickly my guess is he's referring to jack the jack we're talking about but he does not name jack i'm just saying that i am speculating that he's leaning towards jack and so because he says he's seemingly allowing him to flee the country without taking a DNA test. Well, he'll be back though, right? And so he lashed out at the lack of leads coming from the cops who backtracked on claims that the killer appeared to be targeting at least one of the four roommates and have yet to even suggest a profile of the likely killer. 
And one of the murder squad officers is only 26. He complained, meaning he was only 19 when the sleepy city of Moscow last had a slam in 2015. Gonsalves told the Post, so they're just inexperienced and I don't want anyone making mistakes in my child's case. Not exactly the most tech savvy people. And as well as his own fears, Gonsalves said, said, you know, that he started working with private investigators because there were enough insiders telling us we should be concerned about the lack of any clear leads in the November 13 murders of his 21 year old daughter and her three friends. He said, I talked to detectives, he said, making clear he was keeping away from internet sleuths whom he dismissed as Hollywood S-H-I-T. One of the private detectives I talked to has 50 years in the game. Well, that's definitely some good experience there, I would say. The gumshoe told him that he had to break cases when there wasn't DNA, suggesting younger cops rely on it too much. Well, there's good reason to rely on DNA, but I, I appreciate that comment. I think I'm gonna learn a little from that. We're trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. He told, he said of police investigators. And so the grieving dad still hopes that cops will be heroes and prove him wrong by ultimately emerging with breakthroughs that solve the case. I'll apologize. I'll come out and say these guys had amazing DNA or some evidence and good for them. I was giving them SHIT and I take it back. I'll, I'd love to be wrong and we can get this guy. That's what he told the New York Post. Gonsalves said he is only speaking out because of his alarm of the, at the lack of leads, including the refusal to release an official profiler of the likely slasher in the November 13th. Something else that's bothered me about internet sleuths. They've actually thrown the parents under the bus, especially the dad for continuing to be in the, as they refer to it, spotlight. I'm telling you, these people who want to give so much feedback on, they, I don't think they do justice all the time. And so I don't blame him for speaking out one bit. He is an angry dad. He has every right to speak up. He admitted that he also fears that this hoodie wearing man spotted lingering near his daughter and her best friend, Madison Mogan, also 21, was ruled out too quickly for killing the pair and their two friends. Some people come to us and said that he's out of the country. He didn't take a DNA test. Did they ask him to take a DNA test? Right? Did they ask him? So he continues, so we would like police to tell us what his alibi was, saying he would be able to move on if they could confirm it was solid. Vague mixed messaging on whether the killer likely targeted at least one of the four roommates and why could also lead to a dangerously false sense of security, he warned. I've heard people talk to reporters and say that they'd be, you know, way more scared if it wasn't targeted. Some people think that means they, the victims, were, you know, gambling or they were doing drugs or they were doing something that they shouldn't be doing. That really made them the killer come after them. That's what he said of the lack of information. My message is, I think having a couple of beers with your girlfriend going home, texting and crashing out in the bed together, I think a lot of girls did that. He said of his daughter and Mogan, who were sleeping in the same bed in the third floor bedroom when they were killed, and a lot would be targeted if they'd, if that's all they did. His daughter and her best friend, they were brutally stabbed and they were in the bed together and we find out that 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 his daughter had the most wounds now one private detective you a former NYPD detective should i say he has his doubts about him bringing in a private investigator 
And so the former detective, Herman Weisberg, he, you know, he now works as a private investigator. And he said that the family, the families of four university students in their off-campus home on November 13th should not hire a private investigator just yet. He says, I do this for a living. I would say that's the last thing the police, the FBI, and the state police need is yet another person looking for information. They need to really control the flow of information. They need to pay a lot of respect to the families of these victims, and it's a tightrope walk. But they need to do their job, and police, and people need to let them do their job as best they can. And so I can appreciate that. And he continues saying, spending every waking moment, minute of their lives trying to solve this thing, and there's no one that cares more about it besides the family, obviously, than the people that are working this, and they want results, and they want to have this perpetrator behind bars immediately. I really don't think a private investigator could be as much help on this. I think the public needs to come together and share whatever information that they have. But besides that, the police are the ones tasked with this, and we should all let them do their job. And that's what the, the former detective, current private investigator, is sharing about that. And, you know, I think he makes some great points on this. I mean, let me know in the comments what you think about that. Do you think that he's on the right track, that they should just let the police do their stuff and so my you know again i don't know that jack showalter is the suspect i don't know if it many people are 100 percent convinced i'm not one to do that i i want more information tell me that you have some blood tell me you have video of him tell me something that could lead more to this i get that Steven Gonzalez is upset. I want answers for this gentleman as well. And, but I don't want the wrong person to be out there. But if that is the hoodie guy, and it sounds like it is, I was very skeptical. I thought that, that what that little clip shared was damaging on its own. My friends, if you know anything, please contact the Moscow police at 208 883 7180 or the tip line at ci.mosco.id.us. My friends, I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you again for joining me. At the end of the day, I just want to be a voice for the victims. I just want to share with you what could go so wrong out there that we need to be careful for. Do I think that he's a suspect? I really don't know. Am I starting to have some doubts that he may be? I'll be honest, I am. Because some things look shady, but until we know everything, I'm not going to point fingers at him. Until we know, was he already planning this Africa trip? Is that why he left so late in the middle of the night? Because he had to get there. I mean, to me, that's perfectly understandable. If he leaves at two and they believe that, he, that they're killed after this time, it's hard for me to believe that he's there then. I want to know more before I'm going to point fingers at him. And so we do know that Jack Showalter is the hoodie guy. And I do know that when I first shared that little piece of the clip, that I thought that was very suspect. But the law enforcement are the ones that are deeper in this than I am. They cleared him. So I'm going to say he's cleared as of right now until he's brought back into the limelight. So all you internet sleuths that are just trying to throw everyone under the bus, including that one guy I talked about who just, he, he will fabricate things. He fabricated Gabby Petito. It is alleged that he fabricated the mask guy. And then he does a video that this is the suspect, which when he reports on it really brings doubt to me. So at the end of the day, my friends, I just want to be a voice for the victims. And I hope you have an amazing day. Please be careful out there. If you know something, say something. If you are a, if you are a person of prayer, please pray that we get justice for these four victims and their families. 
I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you so much. Hey, if this is the type of content you like to follow, please hit on that subscribe button because at the end of the day, I want to keep you updated on what could go wrong in this crazy world we live in. And we know that this is a story that is on everyone's mind right now. And so, my friends, thank you for joining me on another episode of Deep True Crime. I look forward to serving you again. Peace. Have a great day, my friends.